In this video, we're going to do some calculus with exponential functions. At least we're going to start. We're going to have to learn some more before we can really have a complete picture, but we're going to learn about the derivatives and integrals of exponential functions. So let's start with derivatives and let's go back to our, our definition of the exponential function. It's going to be b to the power of x. b is going to be a positive number not equal to 1. It can't be 1 because we want it to be a 1 to 1 function. Remember our definition of the derivative, the limit definition is the limit as h goes to 0 of the difference quotient f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So if I use my formula for f of x, that would be b to the power of x plus h minus b over x all over h. And I want to take the limit as h goes to 0. Well, there's not a lot I can do here, but I can use the uh, product rule for exponents, and I can rewrite b to the power of x plus h as b to the power of x times b to the power of h. And again, there's not too much I can do, but I can see that I have a uh, common factor of b to the power of x. And so I'm going to go ahead and factor that out. And in fact, that common factor b to the power of x doesn't have any h in it. So as h goes to 0, it doesn't change. It's really a constant as h goes to 0. So I can factor that out entirely from the limit. All right. So what do I have here? That the derivative of this exponential function is the original exponential function times this limit right here. Now, that's in general. If I took the derivative when x equals 0, that would be b to the power of 0 times that limit. But b to the power of 0 is just 1. So the derivative at x equals 0 is the limit as h goes to 0 of b to the power of h minus 1 over h. It doesn't look like I'm getting uh, very far here, but I do see something that's really very important, that the derivative of this exponential function is the original function times the derivative at x equals 0. Now, that's just some number f prime of 0 is some number. So this tells me that the derivative of f is directly proportional to f, where the constant of proportionality is f prime at 0. And this explains the shape of our exponential graph. It has this hockey stick function because, or hockey stick shape, because the slope of the tangent line is proportional to the y-coordinate at that point, which means that the bigger the y-value, the steeper the curve, and the smaller the y-value, the flatter the curve. So as y gets arbitrarily close to 0, the slope of the tangent line gets arbitrarily close to 0. And then as y grows larger, the slope grows larger as well. So is there any way that we can actually make sense out of this? Well, it's going to be a little bit difficult. But one way we can do this is say, well, look, if I could find a value of b where the limit as h goes to 0 of b to the power of h minus 1 all over h equals 1, then I'd have the simplest case. I would just have that f prime of x then is b to the power of x. And so our number e that we've seen before, we're going to redefine it. It happens to be the number which has the property 
where the limit as h goes to zero of e to the power of h minus one all over h equals one. And so that would say that if I have f of x equals e to the x, then f prime of x equals e to the x times f prime of zero. Well, that's always true, no matter what base I have. But from our definition of e, then that would be the limit as h goes to zero of e to the h minus one over h, which is by our definition one. So the derivative of the function e to the x is just e to the x. And you thought the power rule was simple. This is as simple as it gets. So the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x, which means that the antiderivative of e to the x is just e to the x plus some constant of integration. So let's go ahead and practice these properties. First, let's take some derivatives. We'll have to use the rules of differentiation. So I hope you watch that video on the review of these rules. Here we're gonna use the product rule. So I'll do what? Take the derivative of the first, multiply it times the second function, add that to the first function times the derivative of the second. This is the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. All right, here my exponent is not x, it's a function sine of x. So that tells me I need to use the chain rule. And so y prime of x would be the derivative of the outside. So the outside function is just like e to the u. The inside function is sine of x. So multiplied times the derivative of the inside which is cosine of x. So inside here means inside the exponent. And I might want to clean that up and write that as cosine of x times e to the sine of x. Our last example, we have a quotient. So we'll go ahead and use the quotient rule. Remember the quotient rule says you take the derivative of the top times the bottom then subtract off the derivative of the bottom. So derivative of one is zero and the deri derivative of negative e to the x is just negative e to the x. That's the derivative of the bottom times the top all over the bottom squared. Now I might want to collect some like terms here. So let me go ahead, and multiply this out using the distributive property and multiply this out and so uh, the e to the 2x terms add to make zero. And I'm just left with e to the x on top all over one minus e to the x in parentheses squared. Let's do some antiderivatives or integrals. So here I want to find the indefinite integral. So the antiderivative of secant squared theta times e to the power of tangent theta d theta. So I remember that the derivative tangent theta, tangent theta is secant squared theta. And so this looks like e to the u du. In fact, if I just formally say u equals tangent theta, I can see that du is secant, theta, secant squared theta d theta. So this portion right here, the secant squared theta times d theta can be replaced with du. And then e to the tangent theta will be e to the power of u. So my integral in terms of u is just the integral of e to the u du, which whose antiderivative is e to the u plus c. And I don't wanna leave it in terms of u. So let me go back. My original variable theta, that'll be e to the power of tangent theta plus c. Our second integral is a definite integral. And I'm going to need another u substitution. Now this one might uh, not be as clear, but um, as a general rule, if I'm not quite sure what to use as my value of u, I can always try what's under the radical sign. So that's what I'm going to try here. 
if u equals one plus e to the negative x, then du would be e to the negative x times negative one. Where does the negative one come from? Well, remember negative x is negative one times x. So the derivative of negative one times x is negative one. And so this comes from using the uh, chain rule. So uh, using the properties of exponents, that means that du is negative one over e to the power of x times dx. So this, uh, I'm gonna change the bounds, okay. Uh, x equals zero, uh, if I put x equals to zero here, I get e to the zero power, which is one plus one. So u would equal two when x equals zero. When x equals one, e to the power of negative one is the same as one over e. So now the dx over e to the x is just negative du. And then the radical of one plus e to the negative x will be just radical u. And I'll change the bounds as well. So my integral in terms of u as the integrand well, negative radical u du. And my bounds go from two at the bottom to one plus one over e at the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and write a radical u. I'm gonna make two changes. I'll write radical u as u raised to the one half power. And I'm gonna actually swap these bounds. There's two reasons for doing that. Uh, I like to have the bigger number on top and the smaller number on bottom. One plus one over e is smaller than two. And also that'll help me get rid of this negative sign. So just remember that the uh, if I swap the bounds of integration or interchange them, the result is that I will change the sign of the integral. So now my lower bound is one over e my upper bound is two. Let me just remove the lines here. And now I've written it as u to the one half power. So I can think of the power rule. If I use the power rule to find the antiderivative, I'll have to add one to a one half. That gives me three halves. And then take its reciprocal as the multiplier, so two thirds comes out in front. And I'll evaluate that between uh, one plus one over e and two. And to evaluate that, I'm gonna remember that if I take a number to the three halves power, a clean way of writing that is a times radical a, so a number times radical a. So I'll have the two thirds outside of the brackets, inside I'll have two radical two, and then the quantity one plus one over e times the radical of one plus one over e. Now, we know the derivative of f of x equals e to the x. What if I have a different base? What if I have something as simple as two to the power of x? What's its derivative? Well, it's not gonna be difficult to calculate that, but it's gonna be much easier after we re review log functions and their properties. And that will be our next video.